What's good, Theophiloi? It's your boy, Benito, and I am here to bring you a very special episode of our show. This is Apocrypha Pals, episode Secret 69, dudes. And uh, this is a piece of special bonus audio that we're putting together because uh, we surpassed 316 reviews on Apple Podcasts. So thank you, everyone. Um, I'm joined today by my special guest host, Count Chocula, my cat, and probably also my other cat, Uncle Deadly, who will be antagonizing him for the duration of this recording. Um, But uh, this episode uh, is special, and it's secret, because we are not going to tell Chris about it, is what's going to happen. Um, This, we will be covering a text that we promised Chris that we would never cover on the show, Um, but here we are doing it. Do not tell him. And as long as we're not telling Chris things, um, it's very warm today. Um, It's very warm, but it looks like Friday night is going to be pretty nice. So uh, at the moment, though, it's very warm and humid. I am extremely sweaty while recording this. But we're not here to talk about how sweaty I am. We are here today to talk about Mary Magdalene, the original space kook. And more specifically, we are here to talk about some questions she might have had. Uh, That's right, we will be covering the forbidden text, The Greater Questions of Mary, um, which Chris has explicitly forbidden from ever being covered on the show. And that is why, again, I must urge, do not tell him that we did this episode. Okay, he's not... He's not here. I don't want him to know about it. It will gross him out to the maximum. So please, please don't tell Chris. Um, But before we can talk about Mary Magdalene and the questions that she might have, we first need to talk about a uh, a Gnostic sect known as the Borborites. So uh, the Borborites were also known by various other names, including the Fibionites, the Barbalites, the Secundians, the Socratites, among others. Uh, they, were, they were a Christian Gnostic sect from the late 4th century. Um, the name Borborite comes from the Greek word borboros, uh, which means mud, and they are called that because they are the filthy ones, and their interpretation of Christianity is gross. And that is a very large reason why uh, Chris doesn't want to talk about it on the show. Uh, but let's talk a little bit more about the Borborites. Um, they had a number of of sacred texts that uh, are far outside of uh, the canon of Christian literature. Um, These texts include a book called Noria, which is about uh, Noah's wife, who they gave the name Noria. There's also a Gospel of Eve, an Apocalypse of Adam, a Gospel of Perfection, and they also had a text called the Gospel of Philip, but the quote from the Borborite Gospel of Philip that we have uh, does not match any Um, existing version of the Gospel of Philip that we have recovered from the Nag Hammadi library of Gnostic texts. So I don't know if it was a different one or if they just had different versions or if the quoted passage was not accurate or or what's up. I don't know. Um, But the Borborites also had a number of uh, sacred texts about Adam and Eve's third son, Seth, um, who is a major figure in many uh, Gnostic texts. Um, and Barbarite texts about te- Seth included uh, the second treatise of the great Seth and the three steels of Seth. Um, and while the Barbarites uh, did use both the Hebrew scriptures and the Greek Christian scriptures, they, like many Gnostics, felt that the God of the Hebrew Bible um, was not the real God, but was in fact an imposter. Um, the Demiurge is a term that you might have heard and thrown around. Um, it is the God who created the th- imperfect, flawed, um, ultimately evil physical world, and not um, the the one true God. Uh, And you can see this reflected in their larger uh, beliefs, which include that there were eight heavens. We've seen an all number of heavens, right? We're familiar with the idea of seven heavens, but we've seen texts where there are nine heavens uh, or ten heavens. Um, For the for the Borborites, there were eight heavens, um, each one ruled under a separate archon, which is another common um, Gnostic idea, archons being um, demons, basically. They're mostly malevolent, numinous beings. Um, The seventh uh, level of heaven was ruled by Sabaoth, which is the name we've seen applied um, 
to Yahweh in a number of places. Yahweh Sabaoth, he's the, um, he's the god of hosts. Um, but the, in uh, Borborite cosmology, Sabaoth is the creator of heaven of earth. He's the god of the Jews. And the Borborites understood him to be either a donkey or a pig, which is the reason why, um, according to the Borborites, uh, the Jews were not allowed to eat pork. However, in the farthest heaven, the eighth heaven, uh, Barbalo ruled, and Barbalo is the mother of the living, the father of all, the supreme God, the one true God, who lived there with Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, they, as you know, many Gnostic sects, reject physicality as corrupt, and so for them, they were docetic, which means uh, they believed that Jesus was a hologram, and uh, so they denied that Christ was born of Mary, um, and they also denied the resurrection of the body and that only the spirit is pure because for them, the human soul, um, after the body dies, the soul wanders through the seven heavens until finally landing in the eighth heaven where it rests with Barbalo. And humans share souls with plants and beasts. And um, St. Augustine says that the Borborites taught that the soul came from the substance of um, the true God, and so it, wa it wasn't possible to pollute the soul in the way that you could pollute the body. Now, um, of course, the reason we're really here is that the Borborites had a number of texts regarding Mary Magdalene, who we see here in her Sasquatch form, um, and the texts about Mary Magdalene include the one we're doing today, the greater questions of Mary, um, the lesser questions of Mary, and the birth of Mary. But none of these texts have actually survived. We don't actually have any of them, that's right, including the one we're covering today. Um, the only reason we know about them, the only reason we have any um, idea of what might have been contained in them is because of the writings of a guy named um, Epiphanius of uh, Salamis, who was an early Christian heretic hunter. Um, he wrote, uh, let's see, he was, so let me start with this. He was a bishop of Salamis, which is a Greek area, and uh, he lived about 310 until 403 CE. Um, uh, Salamis is in Cyprus, I should say, um, the, the island of Cyprus. Um, he is considered a saint. He is a church father among both the Eastern Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Roman Catholic Churches. Um, he's most famous for being a defender of orthodoxy and hating heretics. And so he's best known for his work called the Panarian, um, which was a large compendium of heresies um, from his own time. Um, the word Panarian is actually a um, relatively rare instance of a Greek word being borrowed from Latin and not the other way around. Um, usually Latin is borrowing from Greek, but in this case, um, the Greek word panarion comes, uh, panarion comes from the Greek, uh, the Latin word panarium, meaning a bread basket, which uh, seems a little bit strange until you understand that the idea is that this was um, basically a, um, a basket, a stock of Here's the quote, a stock of remedies to offset the poison of heresy. And so that is the idea. His, his book is supposed to be like a medicine cabinet um, full of antidotes for heresy. And so um, the Panarian is a collection of um, him, him discussing these different heresies. And it is, the, in many cases, the only source for a lot of so-called heretical documents um, because he quotes them and he says, here's what these people say. Um, and so the Panarian was written in Greek around 374, 375, um, and it treats 80 different religious sects, um, either they, either, which were either groups or just philosophies, um, covering the time of Adam until the fourth century when he was writing. And generally his thing is describing what they believe and then um, debunking those beliefs. And so the Panarian was an important um, source for Jewish Christian gospels, um, including the Gospel of the Ebionites, the Gospel of the Hebrews, uh, the Gospel of the Nazorians, um, and so on. Um, so let's just, um, you know what, let's just, I'm just gonna read it. I'm just gonna read what Epiphanius has to say about 
the questions of Mary. Okay, it's not very long. It's not the actual text. It's just him describing the text and theoretically quoting the text. We don't know that for sure. Um, but um, our, our main characters um, are Jesus, uh, you might have heard of him, uh, and Mary Magdalene. Uh, here they are together, you can see. Um, here's Jesus telling her not to touch him. That's going to change in this text. All right, so here's what Epiphanius says. This is from uh, the Panarian, book 26, chapters 8, lines 1 uh, through uh, chapter 9, line 5. All right, uh, and they too have lots of books. They publish certain questions of Mary, but others offer many books about the Yaldabaoth. That's another um, Gnostic deity there, um, and in the name of Seth. They call others Apocalypses of Adam and have ventured to compose other Gospels in the name of the disciples and are not ashamed to say that our Savior and Lord himself, Jesus Christ, revealed this obscenity. For in the so-called greater questions of Mary, there are also lesser ones forged by them, they claim that he reveals it to her after taking her aside on the mountain, praying, producing a woman from his side, beginning to have sex with her, and then partaking of his omission, if you please, to show that thus we must do that we may live. All right, just to be clear, Jesus takes Mary Magdalene up to a mountain. Um, he pulls a additional woman out of his side, uh, I guess Adam and Eve style, begins um, having sex with the woman uh, that uh, he pulled out of his own body, and then um, when he finishes, he eats his own jisms. This is not going on the feed, so I can say jisms. All right. Um, and then he says to Mary, this is, this is necessary. This is a thing that we as human beings must do. Um, when Mary was alarmed and fell to the ground, she fainted. I thought maybe that meant she died. And maybe she did. I don't know. Let's interpret it how you want. She either fainted or she died. Uh, Jesus raised her up and said to her, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And they say that this is the meaning of the saying in the gospel, If I have told you earthly things and ye believe it not, how shall ye believe the heavenly things? And so of, when ye see the Son of Man ascending up where he was before. In other words, when you see the omission, the jisms, being partaken of where it came from. And then Jesus said, Except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the disciples were disturbed and replied, Who can hear this? They say his saying was about the dirt, about his jisms. And this is why they were disturbed and fell away. They were not entirely stable yet, they say. And when David says, He shall be like a tree planted by the outgoings of water that will bring forth its fruit in due season, they say he is speaking of the man's dirt, the man's... You know what I... You know what it is. By the outgoing of water, and that will bring forth his fruit, mean the emission at climax. And its leaf shall not fall off means we do not allow it to fall to the ground, but we gobble it up. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, and so, as not to do more harm than good by making their proof text public, I'm going to omit most of them. Otherwise, I would cite all their wicked sayings and go through them here. When it says that Rahab, um, from the book of Joshua, which we have not done yet on the show, but we'll be doing very soon, uh, put a scarlet thread in her window, this was not scarlet thread, they tell us, but the female organs. And the scarlet thread means the menstrual blood. And drink water from your cisterns refers to the same. They say that the flesh must, pe must perish and cannot be raised, and this belongs to the archon. But the power in the menses and organs is soul, they say, which we gather and eat. And whatever we eat, meat, vegetables, bread, or anything else, we are doing creatures a favor by gathering the soul from them all and taking it to the heavens with us. Hence they eat meat of all kinds and say that this is to show mercy to our race. So we talked about how the idea that um, humankind shares a soul with the animals, the idea is you eat meat, you absorb their soul like the Highlander or something, I guess, and so that when you go to heaven, you take all the animal souls up with you. Uh, and they claim the same soul has been implanted in animals, insects, fish, snakes, men, and in vegetation, trees, and the fruits of the soil. Um, we do not know anything about the lesser questions of Mary that is referred to here. Um, we only have this quote um, from the greater questions. And so what's going on here is that Epiphanius is claiming that the Borbrites were inspired uh, by Sethianism and um, parts of uh, sexual sacramentalism. And so what's going on is their version of the Eucharist, of, um, of communion, is that they would uh, smear their hands with menstrual blood and semen and then eat them as the blood and body of Christ. 
Um, the blood is the blood and the jisms is the body, in case you were confused. I don't, I don't suspect you were confused. But, um, and they also said that if a woman in their church was having her period, they would take the menstrual blood and then everyone in the church um, would eat it. And they were also said that uh, if a woman was pregnant, they would pull out the fetuses and then eat the fetus. Um, especially if the woman had accidentally become pregnant during one of their um, gross sexual rituals. However, this might sound extreme to the point of incredulity, uh, incredibility to you, um, and probably for good reason. Bart Ehrman, our guy, for example, he doesn't believe that Epiphanius um, is being entirely truthful here. He thinks he is perhaps exaggerating, even full out telling some porky pies. Um, he says, quote, uh, the details of, of Epiphanius' description sound very much like what you can find in the ancient rumor mill about secret societies in the ancient world. That's true. You can hear um, similar uh, claims being made um, about Jews and Christians, right? If you hear things about um, in the early days of the Roman persecution, Christians were accused of being cannibals because of uh, misunderstandings of, uh, of the Eucharist or... The idea, you, you might have seen us tweeting about the, um, the graffiti in which Jesus is drawn uh, with a donkey head because they thought that uh, Christians worshipped a donkey god. Um, and of course, blood libel against Jews um, was a major issue, continues to be a major issue um, among uh, anti-Semites. Uh, and so uh, it's pretty easy to imagine that maybe um, these things did not happen. But they're very interesting to think about. They're incredibly gross. Chris didn't want to hear about it. Chris didn't want it to be on our show. We absolutely could not put it on the regular feed and continue to have our uh, clean tag that we value so much. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's the greater questions of Mary. Um, that's the whole thing. That's all there is to it. Um, and so that concludes this secret episode of the show. Please do not tell Chris, do not let him know that we that we did this, that this happened, this secret conclave. We met together in the uh, necropolis under the city, um, don't in the catacombs. Don't tell anyone about this very secret episode 69, episode secret 69, dudes, um, that we have done. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, and you know what? If you want to eat chisms and menstrual blood, that's fine. Just be safe about it. Be safe in these streets, guys. Um, mask up, wash your hands, eat the menstrual blood. I, I, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you how to live your life or worship your hologram god. Do, do what you got to do. Um, so um, that will conclude this secret episode. Do not tell Chris. Um, thank you for rating and reviewing. We'll do another um bonus episode like this as soon as we hit oh let's say 420 let's say when we hit 420 reviews on uh, apple podcasts we'll do another one like this i hope you enjoyed it um and so until our next secret episode peace be with you and also with me